and recording so it's been a little bit since i've reacted to dance gavin dance i've explored the swan verse um i think that's what it's called uh the guitarist for this band i think his his last name is swan and he has his own record label so i've gotten a bunch of suggestions for like royal coda and um several other bands that include the exact same members over and over in different configurations and they're actually pretty cool actually that sort of um spiral youtube hole that i fell into there is actually kind of cool but as far as this band goes uh of the three singers that they've had i've reacted to songs by two of them i think the current guy's name is Tillian, and I don't exactly like his voice. Like, it's a little too high for me, and it has a lot of um, pop sensibilities. Like, it sounds kind of commercial. The second singer, whose name escapes me, uh, has actually been much, much better and actually sits in the mix, like, really well um in regards to how it sounds against the instrumentation and like the guitar work, the first singer I haven't heard at all. So based off of that, I had a suggestion to do backwards pumpkin song, which I believe is from their first album. And I have it queued up here. I'm curious to see what this sounds like because, um, the newer stuff had kind of like a pockets of funkiness, like a little funk. And I don't know if that's necessarily a trademark of the band or if that's something they've evolved into. Because from what I know of them, they're kind of just like a hardcore band or like a post-hardcore. And if this is the first album, I'm imagining it's going to be kind of straightforward, like hardcore. But who knows? Just jump right in. Sounds like as good a place as any to give it a little break for copyright purposes. Uh, what's cool about this is that you can definitely hear, and I think I've said this before, you can definitely hear the Mars Volta influence in the guitar work. Uh, well, at the drive-in slash Mars Volta, which is the same guitarist, obviously. Um, yeah, and the drum work sounds cool, sounds really good. Uh, 
but the meat and potatoes, since I compared the um, singers earlier, I like his clean vocals. Like they sound a little whiny, but that's kind of the sound. And it fits really well. His, uh, his growls, his screams actually sound pretty good too. Especially for like a first album, like the production on this is pretty damn good. I, it's only been about two minutes, but I, as of right now, I still think the second singer sounds the best. But I've only heard two minutes of this song, and it's only one song. So, yeah, let's just get back into it. Rewind a little. <laughs> So I enjoyed the hell out of this song. So I kind of have a like a sliding scale of what I think of this band because like this song was really good. Um, the last like two songs I've heard and reacted to, whose names escape me at the moment, I actually really liked as well. It's the newer stuff that I'm not particularly fond of. But this sounds great. I think when it comes to um, different singers, I'm always curious how a band handles that because you have a certain identity when you start. And when you transition into a different singer, you want to incorporate their style but not have it take over the identity of the band and not transform it too much because at that point it, it's weird because like the singers tend to be like the focus of the band they tend to be like the they're the front person so they get so much attention and their personality is what you want but you bring them in because you're a collective and you want to portray a certain sound so you don't want them to influence too much so it's a careful kind of balancing act and I think there's some continuity between the first singer and the second singer like I think the sound is pretty like like set and their approaches and attacks 
as far as their cadences and all that kind of stuff is not overly similar, but it's within the same style. So it actually works out in their favor. The, uh, the two different, uh, singers that they had, like it actually doesn't take their sound and like transform it too, too much with, with the new guy who I don't know. I don't even know how long he's been their their singer. It, is within the style but it's like pushing it to uh, boundaries of like other genres a little bit which isn't necessarily a bad thing i i think they show i have is i think it, the new guy's um voice um i keep saying new guy he's the current guy is more or isn't as complementary to the instrumentation as uh the other two singers are yeah that's that's pretty much it and it it might just be a matter of me getting used to the uh the sound of his voice that's probably all it is i'm curious to see now how the other two singers tackle each other's songs. Hmm. But either way, this was just one song that I've reacted to with the original singer. I think to get a better gauge of what the band is and what this singer actually does and sounds like, I I need to hear something else either from this album or if he's still around for the second album. I'll have to hear another song with him singing. But yeah, uh, I enjoyed this a lot. I enjoyed the second singer a lot. So th- this band, Dance Gavin Dance, I actually, there, there's a fair amount of songs that they have I think that I'm going to enjoy. So I'm, I'm glad I didn't just stop after the first um, reaction I did to them. Like this actually sounds pretty good and pretty cool. So yeah.